Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Today, we have a shootout between big date dive watches from Swatch Group High Horology Brands, Blancpain 50 Fathoms, Grande Date, and the Glossuta Original CQ Panorama Date versus Starts Now. Get a good look at these watches. They are remarkably similar in size, style, and function. And both of these watches compare favorably to industry favorites from other more fancied brands. I would say both of these watches are underrated models from underrated Maison. Let's start with the 50 Fathoms. Now, of course, the first 50 Fathoms was released in 1953, beating the Rolex Submariner to market by a few months. It became the first modern format dive watch. The standard 5015 arrived in 2007, and it provided the template for most of the full-sized 50 Fathoms that came after. In 2018, Blancpain launched this big date model, and it's more than meets the eye. You could see still 45 millimeters, sapphire-capped bezel, black dial, applied indices, and of course, the distinctive stepped lug case, but you could see it's all in satin titanium, so visually it plays differently, and it wears differently as well. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and get a good sense of how it fits. It is the narrower of these two watches across the wrist. It's also thicker here at 16.4 millimeters. The CQs can be 15.9. It's subtle, but it's there. But in titanium, the watch feels almost half its size. An easy big watch to wear on a small wrist. I could see this working on a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. Taking a quick look at the watch, it is nice and subdued, whereas the standard 5015 is generally all of high polish. Here, the satin finish titanium pays dividends. You can see that we're using screws, hex screws, and bars to fix the strap to the case, and that means that it is more resolutely stuck to the case than on the spring bar system used on the Glossuta. Both are secure. This is just more secure. The strap is sailcloth, bolstered to give it some volume, super tough. This should be a decade strap, and then there's rubber underneath to isolate the wrist from the rather coarse textile You can see we have a matching satin 50 fathoms pin buckle, and the bezel, let's hear it, is a nice, sharp, and crisp 120 click. Now the watch features a sapphire cap on its bezel. This has been a feature of the 50 Fathoms watches since the arrival of the 2003 50th anniversary model. That lovely sapphire cap creates the appearance of a perpetual dew drop on top of the bezel. And we also have a plexiglass like cambered sapphire over the dial. The idea is to evoke the plexiglass crystals and acrylic bezel toppers of previous generations of historic 50 Fathoms watches. Let's do a quick loom shot here. You can see that there is a lot going on as the watch features a fully loomed bezel. That's one of the advantages of the sapphire. Being so resolutely scratch resistant, you can paint the bezel underneath the sapphire and get a much more luminous and more easily readable dive watch. As you can see, polished hands, polished indices, Arabic numeral 12, and the signature of this model, the big date or the grand dot down at six o'clock. The watch does feature a quick set for the date and hacking seconds. Turn it all over. Based on caliber 1315, this is caliber 6918B. Still automatic winding, three mainspring barrels, still a five-day power reserve, free sprung for shock resistance, adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer, and of course it features a free sprung balance with variable polar moment nuts mounted on it for adjustment and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. Note the degree of the finish. There's a lovely spiral graining that runs out radially with a curve across the bridges, perfectly aligned. The bevels are an absolute mile wide, almost as good as you'll see from Laurent Ferrier. The screw heads are all polished with chamfered slots and circumference. You can see that it is a three mainspring barrel movement. 44 joules, a standard 1315 would be 35 joules. This one is more heavily jeweled for the additional complication. And you can see that a handsome satination is exercised on the wheels, a combination of of a solar graining and then a concentric graining used on the visible wheels. A truly good looking watch. Four separate finishes on the blackened 18 karat gold winding mass. Now let's take a look at the Glasuta because there is a lot to love there as well. This is a model that launched in 2019, part of the Specialist collection. It is a tribute obliquely to the 1969 RPTS 200 dive watch, which was Glasuta Original's first dive watch. Now, there is a smaller version of this watch that hues more closely to the original. This one takes a couple of cues, like the case lines, the dial font, the broad arrow minute hand, but the panorama date that you see here is the more modern of the two uh, primary CQ models. Stainless steel here, not titanium like the 50 Fathoms, 
At face value, it's a smaller watch. 43.2 millimeters in diameter, it is 15.9 millimeters thick, and I may as well give you a good look at the two side to side. It's not readily apparent to the eye, but it's more apparent when the watch is on the wrist that this watch is about half a millimeter thinner, especially since so much of its loft is created by this domed crystal. And then there's another domed crystal on the back. So the watch component's actually fairly slim here. It is 51.5 millimeters lug to lug, which is a little bit longer than the 50.7 millimeters lug to lug of the Blancpain. So you can see right here again, uh, 51.5 lug to lug, and then right here, 50.7 millimeters. This watch has a 21 millimeter spacing between its lugs. This watch has a 23 millimeter spacing between its lugs. The timepiece wears easily. This strap is one of several options. You can dress it up, dress it down. There's also a bracelet available. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears well. There's a little bit of a curvature to the case, and you can see that from this angle. So though it is broader across the wrist, it's not really something you feel. You do feel the heft of it, though. Steel compared to titanium, that is a striking difference. However, the steel being a wonderfully traditional choice and quite tough, a little bit more scratch tolerant. Taking a look at the strap, you'll appreciate that a very simple, we'll call it sort of ardoise, textile strap is used. It is thick. It doesn't feel quite as robust as the sailcloth used on the Blancpain. This is more of a nylon, but it is tough. It is thick, and it should last a very long time. Well, it looks like a NATO. It's just a simple textile. You can see it doesn't undersling the case back like a NATO would. It features a binding stitch and contrasting black, and then unlike a NATO, you don't crimp it. It just has conventional punch outs for a deployant clasp, which is an uncommon accessory on a textile strap. So rather than getting a simple pin buckle as with the 50 fathoms here, we get a double folding steel clasp with twin trigger release. So you do have to press the triggers in to release it. And it's that trigger action that means this will stay closed resolutely even in the midst of active use and vigorous use. You can see there's satin and polish externally, and then the underside is curved to match the curvature of the wrist. Rolling over the case, you can see some of the vintage elements, probably strongest in the profile of the case, as we have a relatively narrow case band, evocative of a vintage watch, with blended lug profiles. Of course, the 50 Fathoms, famous in the modern era for having these stepped lug profiles that break out from the case band. Here, they are integrated and blended. They're squared off on their ends, sheer on their flank, and relatively narrow. You can see the case band is relatively relatively narrow, squared off, and minimally beveled. All of these are characteristic of the vintage dive watch that it echoes. There's a little bit of a transitional bevel that actually expands at the mid case, and you can see it thickens out at the mid case, gives you a little bit of a polished highlight. The case back is stepped back, which helps the watch to wear a little bit thinner than it measures. And then there's a crown guard structure with a glasuta organelle crown. You can see the crown guard structure for the 50 fathoms, a little bit more spare. The timepiece here featuring a bezel, And it has the same vocal quality of the 50 Fathoms. But I think that the 50 Fathoms is a little bit more distinct. Now, what we have here is a ceramic insert within the bezel, and the bezel is a little bit narrower relative to the dial, and you can see this is a broad bezel watch. This is a relatively narrow one. It does have that blue ceramic for scratch resistance, and then that dramatically domed sapphire to give you the look and feel of a vintage watch. Applique indices and Arabic numerals on the dial. We have a geo counterweighted seconds hand with a luminescent bob, broad arrow minute hand, and then two date discs flush with each other, the panorama date, and Geo had the good taste to match the color of the discs to the color of the blue metallic sunburst dial, made in Germany, of course, East Germany. Glasuta Original, tracing its roots as a manufacturer all the way back to 1845 and F.A. Lange. The movement here is a variation of the caliber 36 that debuted at Basel World 2016 on the Senator Excellence Collection. So it's an automatic winder with a 100-hour power reserve. As with the Blancpain, it has stop seconds and a quick set date. A swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism, but for the most part, this is a free spring balance with the adjustment executed using the nuts on the outer circumference of the balance. You move them in or out to change the polar moment and change the timing. It beats away 28,800 vibrations per hour. Both of these watches do, and both of these watches feature an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, with the Caliber 36 family being the first of the Geo movements to use a silicon hairspring. As with the Blancpain, we have six position adjustment, not a standard high horology and chronometer five. And then this is a 41 joule movement. You can see a number of 
Enduring elements such as fired blue screws, glasuta stripes across the bridges, the solarization of the reduction wheel in the winding system, black polish across the swan's neck regulator, and then you can also see that there are stripes across the skeletonized rotor with a set of radial strakes across the base plate. It's nicely finished, but it's not hand finished to the same degree as you will find on the Blancpain, which doesn't include elements such as, for example, the machined bevels you find here. Here, the bevels are started by machine, but finished by hand. So let's talk about advantages. All right, and we may as well talk about the Geo first, because the Geo is sort of the challenger here. The timepiece is definitely the one that you want to buy new or used if you're price sensitive. This watch is $11,500 new and about $9,500 to $10,000 used. So in terms of depreciation, it actually doesn't take that big a hit, but it's cheaper new or used than the Blancpain. If you want to buy the Blancpain new, it's $17,500. Used, it's about $12,500 to $13,000. So both new and used advantage Glasuta. I would also say that this watch being thinner gets points for that. It's not a huge difference, but it's there. 15.9 versus 16.4. Exclusivity. There are a lot of 50 Fathoms variants floating around, including many from the 5015 line that look exactly like this watch, whereas this line only launched in 2019 and made in relatively small volumes since then remains an uncommon sight. On a dive watch, with a textile strap, a full deployment clasp is going to be a big advantage. This is going to help prevent you from accidentally dropping the watch during the 90% of the time, maybe the 99.9% .9 of the time, you're simply donning or removing it at bedside rather than diving. I'll also mention that a small distinction here is that this watch seems to set with better precision. The caliber 3613 in this watch seems to have less free play in the hands when setting than the caliber 6918B here, so I really do feel like the setting precision here is higher, and it's something you'll do infrequently, but it is a small pleasure when the time comes. There is a bracelet option. There's also a black dial option, so in terms of configuring this watch, there are other ways you can have it, depending on your tastes and budget, whereas here, if you want the Grand Dot version, you're basically getting what you see. The timepiece here also features uh, a wonderful combination of new and fresh styling elements, so being relatively new to the market, if it's novelty that you like, as with exclusivity, the fact that this is newer and produced in smaller volumes is going to give you a little bit of an edge. Where are they equal? Well, they're equal in that they're both from the Swatch Group. They're both from upscale manufacturers in the Swatch Group. They both come with 24-month standard warranties, though you can get an extra 12 on the Glasuta by registering it if you buy it at a a boutique or a flagship store. They are both 300 meter divers, so they're identical on that basis. Now, in terms of ergonomics, that is the first advantage the Blancpain has. It's easier to wear, being shorter from lug to lug and lighter in titanium. I find this is the easier watch to wear on the small wrist. Both of these watches recommended for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger, but this one a little bit more compact, a little bit lighter. It has a 120 hour power reserve to the 100 of the Glasuta, both very good, but the Blancpain is better. The loom on this watch is better, and I will show you right now, side by side, how much better? Taking a quick look, you can see there's both more and brighter loom on the 50 Fathoms. While both are perfectly legible, the Blancpain clearly has the advantage. That was not a tough call. I'll also mention that this watch has better bezel feel and sound. I mentioned they're similarly vocal, but the more I play with these bezels. The more mechanical and precise this one feels, the louder and more distinct it sounds, and perhaps the more underwhelming or the less impressive this bezel becomes. It's a good bezel, except next to this, which is an all-star. I would also say that the screw fixed bars, the fact that the strap is held on by hex screws that hold bars in place, it's a bit more expensive to make and slower to swap out a strap, but it is much more secure than a spring bar. And for a watch of this price, I think that is appropriate. I think both of them are in such a price point that a bar should be, uh, with a screw, just about a default option rather than the exception here. I would also say that the superior movement finish, this is a high horology watch, and it's made 
basically a stone's throw away from Audemars Piguet where the Royal Oak offshore diver with a higher price and a higher market positioning nevertheless comes off the assembly line at AP with inferior movement finish. This truly looks high horology, a hand finish and beautiful caliber you almost wish you could wear upside down. The strap here is better. The sailcloth is a tougher and longer lasting material than the textile used on the Glossuta and the addition of the rubber on the underside means it is wonderfully supple. It doesn't have any of the aggressive qualities that this rather coarse textile does have on the wrist. So it's the best of both worlds, super tough on the top and soft on the bottom. I'll also say historically this watch is more important. While there is the distant RPTS 200 from 1969, the original 50 Fathoms is a seminal timepiece, not just for Blancpain, but for the industry as a whole. The first modern format dive watch. That is a lot of history and heritage, and the only dive watch that arguably sits on the same, the same historical plane as the Rolex Submariner in terms of importance importance and longevity, it is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. So from a historical and heritage standpoint, this one has a much more impressive pedigree. So which one do I prefer? Both good watches, happy to own either one. And if I were budget sensitive, I might lean toward the Glasuta. But cost no object, I'm going for the Blancpain. It looks feels, and thanks to the bezel, even sounds more expensive. Technically, it's a bit more sophisticated. Historically, it's just a bit more august. So guys, let me know in the description below which of these two Swatch Group High Horology Big Date Divers would you prefer for your wrist?